podcast bites. Everybody, welcome to the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Pakulski. Enjoy the podcast with Dr. Scott Stevenson. I'd love to talk then just briefly about sure. how you would suggest something like a lot of the a lot of the world right now seems to be going very low carbohydrate, very ketogenic. I know a lot of my audience does. Right. I'd love to talk about how you would adapt training yeah. uh, to someone who's looking to add muscle right. on a ketogenic diet. Yeah. Um, the first thing I would think I would consider is why is the person on a ketogenic diet? Like what's the... It's a brilliant question, yeah. right? Yeah. Right. And that's what we always talk about is like, yeah. are you attached to this dogmatic approach because you want to be on a ketogenic diet? So the answer is usually, well, because I like the way I feel right. or because it's simple. Yes. Um, right. And and so some people have high inflammation or they have you know, insulin resistance, et cetera, et cetera. And, and they correlate like, hey, I feel better at a ketogenic diet. It's simple right. for me. I'm going to do it. So what we've been actually advocating is the targeted keto approach. So like before, during, after a little bit of carbohydrate, mm -hmm. then the rest of the day you're ketogenic and people seem to kick right back in relatively oh, yeah. quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But so yeah, you talk about that. Like great yeah. question. Yeah. I mean, I, I started doing ketogenic diets like in the late nineties. Yep. Um, Lyle McDonald, I think his, his book, the ketogenic diet is still it's a phenomenal resource. It's still out there. You can still get it. Like, I have it's, it yeah. yeah. It's a great book. So we were messing around with those and there was a group of people literally on a news group. Um, before this was like before you had discussion boards. This was like at the when the internet was in its infancy. Mm -hmm. A lot of them, many of them had epilepsy, or they're controlling for that reason, or they had inflammation issues or autoimmune issues. That's why they're on the ketogenic diets. Now, of course, it's from an accounting perspective, it's very very easy. It's like yeah, you're just like got two things to juggle really: mm -hmm. protein and fat, and your carbs are like you know, just keep them really really low. Um, so yes, the I, I the thing the rule of thumb that I've used with folks, and it's a, maybe a little bit different with a targeted ketogenic diet, is that you don't want to train more than tw a muscle group more than twice, probably, if you're looking for- In a week. Um, before you've carved up, or before you yeah. have a sense that you've replaced the carbs that were used there. Or you'll run into what you're kind of running, running into. So if you're trying to gain muscle mass, um, you want to be able to train hard. You want to be able to train in a progressive fashion. You don't want to go in the gym and feel like, okay, I'm kind of bonking, like I'm, my sets aren't optimal. Um, my reps are just tailing off like that. I'm not able to progressively overload. You're going to want to have you want to have that as sort of the key essential ingredient of your training stimulus, as, as well as with you know having excess calories. You have to have enough calories sure. to build the muscle. So the targeted approach is it's great, especially if you're. There were people on this on this group that was really quite phenomenal. Um, this is back in the late nineties. This is back in the late nineties, and I know it happens now too. There's, there seemed to be some upregulation in the liver. They could, they could even move to like kind of an isocaloric, kind of zone type diet, and still at least have urinary ketones. As yeah. if they sort of turned on the ketogenesis and, and a substantial. Best after being ketogenic for a long, for long, a long time. time yeah. For sure, we talk about that a lot. It's just like yeah. once you've been in for a long time, your body just yeah. knows how to produce ketones, right? right? It's like yeah. I don't know if that's the, you know, best way to describe it scientifically, but yeah, you just. As soon as you remove the carbohydrate, you're back into ketosis. And, you know, the benefit of being in ketosis psychologically, I think, is tremendous. Right. Uh, as far as overall energy, less crashes, I think it's awesome. But I do agree from a performance perspective, there's certainly some limitations. So this, I, this is what we're playing with now. It's like how much carbohydrate can you get away with right. keeping in, like, to fuel performance and still maintain the, the psychological and psychological benefits of ketogenic diet. Yeah. So there, uh, one of the specs, you might have someone who – um, maybe gets triggered by carbs, like they get they get a little of the grayling release, and like when they when they add the carbs in, they're like, okay, now I want cupcakes and sure. pancakes. Yep. So that person has to be very very careful. They have to be very very structured. Um, other people, it may not matter. For instance, you might have a scenario where someone trains late in the day, and the carbohydrates allow them to sleep really really well. Absolutely. Yeah. So they could they could get away with you know 150 grams of carbs. Um, you know, three times a week. Right. Wake and, up in the morning and still be deep and, ketosis. And being, yeah, and, yep. and not really lose anything, get a great night's sleep. Right. So, like, those are two scenarios. So, as far as the TKD, it's going to depend on the person, their relationship with food, what their training volume is, too. So, of course. That's huge. So, that, that was kind of where I was going with that question. Yes, it's like, yes. adjust, how do you adjust your training, volume, density? For someone who is on a ketogenic diet, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna come down some to some degree probably to an auto regulatory type of thing. How often are you training? That idea of don't train more than probably twice without adding some carbs in. Um, if you're doing a, like a purely targeted ketogenic diet, 
and you're literally like sticking those like like when you I'll just ask you this when you when you have people doing a TKD how many carbs are they having and how often completely different for everybody right okay yeah. so we'll, we'll start somewhere in the realm of just 30 to 40 grams right like pre-workout yeah. see what this does you know, and that's and just to pop them out of ketosis because they feel better when they're training or because it, it seems to extend with, the ability to produce volume. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, some people are up to 150 grams, you know, but with right. 75 before, 75 during, it's yeah. going to kick them out, but right. usually they're going to get back, right, right back in. Yeah. Relatively, so, but it's a progressive thing, right? Right. How much muscle mass do you have? How hard do you work it? You know, like it has to be subjective, but yeah. just want to give people guidelines like, hey, don't be so myopically opposed to carbohydrates like yeah. what is your goal right if your goal right. is to be in ketosis as you said ask yourself why yes yeah so here, here's the thing and and, and it's because there's so much biological interindividuality and goals are so different so let's say let's say you've got someone who really loves ketogenic diets let's say let's say they're even like a, there's a, they're a sponsored competitive bodybuilder and so the ketones are sort of part of their niche. They've got to be, they've got to do a ketogenic diet, but they want to get as large as humanly possible. It's a, it's a guy, he's five foot eight, you know, he wants to go from 220 to 250. He may eventually just simply by virtue of needing those calories, need to add in the carbs at some point. He may have to go to like a cyclical, a combo cyclical targeted ketogenic diet. Um, where he's doing like a Refeeds full day once or twice a week. Yeah, yeah. something like that a, a carbohydrate based refeed like maybe once a week and then add, adding targeted ketogenic targeted keto, uh, car, targeted carbs two or three times a week before his big work. Funny. Do you know Jordan Joy? Yeah. He was just on the podcast and he yeah. talked exactly about that. He okay. says I'm doing targeted and I'm doing cyclical. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so he's like every week once a week he'll have uh, a big sushi meal. Right. It's always the same. He's like, this is what I like. It makes me feel good. Right. And I've been growing. I've been staying lean. I feel like I'm make ketosis all week. I was like, it's exactly what you're saying. Right. He's figured yeah. it out. Yeah. There were yeah. guys like on this group that they were there doing like 10 day cycles. That's, you have to look outside the box. Everyone's like, what's a seven day week? So like Saturday's going to be my carb day. It's like, well. Why? Yeah, not necessarily. Right. Like if you, if your training and recovery suggests, you know, you, you need to use like a four day split and spread that over eight days or what have you, then you might be on like a 10 day cycle for your carbs. It may, you know, things may, and it may, may it be relative to what muscle groups you feel like you most need the carbs for. Um, there's also the idea, let's say someone has, um, let's say back, their back is what they need to grow. And so they're going to place those carbohydrates around the back training, um, maybe to make sure they got plenty of, they've fueled up with carbs so they can train back really, really hard. And then they can take carbs in before the back training. So they get that effect, that sort of ergogenic effect. And then the recovery of refilling, making sure the back muscles aren't low on glycogen. Mm -hmm. um, so they may, they may set things up around that weak muscle group as well. So it's so individual. Um, and it's relative to the person. That's why we're here, though. We're trying to provide people information yeah. so they can start making these intelligent decisions yeah. rather than being, you know, myopically focused around one approach. Yeah, the thing I think it's it's a tendency, and this happens just. It's I think it's somewhat human nature. We're we're tribal. Um, zealotry is just something that's sort of want like, to follow. Yeah, yeah, to some degree. So it's like yeah. ah, I'm like you know I I hate carbs and I'm doing carbs. I'm keto. That's that's sort of where I'm where I'm stuck. Right. And um, if you realize like, it's just a tool, you know, don't try to use a, a hammer when a screwdriver is the right tool. Mm -hmm. You know, if you need to use carbs because you need the carbs for performance and you need the carbs for calories, then use the carbs. Um, if for you, because of your work, you need to be in ketosis as much as possible so you can think clearly and you can be performing meetings and talk with people and do whatever, then you don't have to do that. You'll have to then weigh your priorities in a way that exactly. matches that. Avocado, motherfucker.